Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the 35th annual Necronomicon in Tampa, Florida. I'm GW Pometer, and this is the Hanging With Web Show. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't already, please go on down and hit subscribe for us, and make sure you check out our description for information about our guests and, and our, our partners and the people that are here on the show. We are here hanging with John Catapano, an author of The Usual Suspects and Clarence. Clarence. Okay. John, Hi. thanks for hanging with us, man. Thanks for asking. All right. So, where to start? Oh, let's start with Clarence. Okay. Clarence. Okay. Um, let's give us the book blurb. Clarence came out a couple of years ago, and it's based around a carnival that occurs in the 1930s during the Depression. It's one of the last horse-drawn carnivals in the United States. And the leader of the carnival is Dr. Sarcophagus. He's kind of enig enig enigmatic. Nobody's quite sure how old he is. He doesn't quite age, but he has this huge knowledge of the occult and the supernatural. And of course, there's always some very strange people in the carnival. In Clarence, there's a fish boy in the freak show named Clarence, and he's brought to him by an old sea captain. Okay. During the tour, these strangers show up and offer him this weird bar of gold to do a show at Innsmouth, their town, on All Hallows' Eve. So he accepts the gold, but during the rest of the tour, before the date, he's got to figure out why these people are paying him an excessive amount of money for a depression to come to their town to do this show. What their, their motives are and how he can keep himself, Clarence, and the rest of the company safe. Okay. So it's really a detective story. Sort of a, de a supernatural detective right. I say nice. it's, it's like Sherlock Holmes verse meets H.P. Lovecraft. Nice. Kind of thing. Excellent. All right. So um, what inspired that story? Well, actually, uh, Dr. Sarcophagus is a character that a friend of mine created, and he did an anthology, which Clarence was one of the stories in the anthology. Okay, okay. So what he gave all of us, I think there were nine authors, gave us the basic parameters and said, do anything you want. I came up with the longest story, and it was actually the last story in the anthology, and I reprinted it. Okay, all right, and, and it's a novella. Uh, yes. So it's a, it's a good, uh, this is a great read. You got time one night, and you don't want to watch television, this is it. This, is, this yep. is a great read in that way. And now we have back here, we have the unusual suspects. Uh, I'm sensing a theme. That's the follow-up. Okay. And... Oh, there we go. It's, it, it occurs we'll after pop the. Pop that up here, guys. It occurs after uh, Clarence. Okay. And it's the winter, and um, Doctor Sarcophagus, Sarcophagus gets three new acts from a competitor. He brings them all down to Winter Haven, Florida, where they're honing their their acts for the tour. During that time, a young man is murdered horribly in the woods nearby. So the local sheriff, who knows all of the carnival people and all the circus people, asks the doctor and his animal trainer to go and look at the body because it appears an animal has murdered this guy. So they go and very quickly they determine that it's not just an animal, it was a shapeshifter. Okay. So then the doctor pretty much figures out that someone in the new acts is a shapeshifter. Shape okay. They all have shapeshifting in their cultures. There's an American, a Native American knife throwing act who has the tradition of the Wendigo. Mm -hmm. There is a couple of Eastern Europeans who, of course, have the werewolf tradition. And then there's an Indian woman who's a snake charmer, and she has the wear tiger tradition. Wow. They all have access. None of them have alibis. So his, what he's trying to do is he's trying to find out how to test these people and how to find out who the shapeshifter is before the next full moon. Okay. So how are readers responding? Very well. Very well. Very well. Matter of fact, Unusual Suspects came out of a lot of emails and feedback I got from Clarence. 
asking what I was going to do with more. that character. Yeah, we want more, right? right. Yeah. Awesome, man. That is fantastic. So how long have you been writing professionally now? Um, if you count journalism, I mean, I've, I've been writing since grammar school. I was on my high school newspaper, college newspaper, and yearbooks. I've written a lot of fan articles for magazines. I've written technical journals as an, as an entertainment engineer that I've done for 40 years. I've just retired. So uh, I've been writing almost all my life. All right. If I don't have a business card on him, y'all are crazy because I got a lot of stuff here I don't know how to use. So, <laughs> all right. So, John, let's um, let's kind of dive in. You're making the tour now. You're going around and, and sharing your work mm -hmm. and with uh, uh, conventions and conferences, etc. So, um, we want your readers and fans to get to know you, to kind of the guy, John. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think, uh, if somebody had to ask you, and I just did, um, what's the weirdest thing about John? Mm. It's kind of broad. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we... I started out in college wanting to be a zoologist. Actually, uh, an insect zoologist. An insect zoologist. So, then I found out what it paid, and I quickly went to communications, wound up in television. Um, I've worked in broadcast television. I've worked for Howard Stern, I've done the Olympics, I've done the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. Uh, then Very started eclectic. Yeah, yeah, and then started teaching. Uh, I've taught in universities and colleges. Left there to become an Imagineer at Disney for 18 years. Left wow. there and I've worked for a bunch of different entertainment companies. The last one as their director of, of uh, engineering for an international entertainment company. I've done that. Fantastic. Um, when I was, I've also worked on pictures, on feature films. I was a consultant on Mars Attacks. Wow. Um, I worked on the original um, Jurassic Park as an, as an engineering consultant. Uh -huh. And part of that pay, which was really great, was I got to spend two weeks with Jack Horner wow. in Montana digging up dinosaurs. Oh, sweet. And I, I have some pictures with me today if you want to see. All right, so that qualifies as unusual because that's, that's, that's fantastic. Um, then, can I add one more thing? Yeah, by all means. I was a junior, I was junior in, in college. I was writing for a college paper. Ed and Lorraine Warren came to do a lecture. They also did an investigation of one of the buildings I worked in because the buildings go back into the 1700s. Wow. We became good friends. I did a couple of uh, investigations with them. Oh, and that wow. was like 42 years ago. Wow. So, wow. All right. I get to geek out now because that was really cool. That's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, what more do you guys need to know? Go home. You know this guy. Buy the book. All right. So, all right. So, what is the last thing you can remember taking a picture of? That's easy. My dog. Your dog. I have, I have a, a rescue. You guys want to know who's responsible for the dog and cat photos on the internet? It's John. It, his not dog. all of them. Not, not all, all of them, but that one. I have, I have an eight-year-old hound mix that I rescued. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, he's, he's my best buddy. That's fantastic. That is great. What's, what's his name? Fargo. Fargo. He's named after the character in Eureka, the guy with the dark yeah, glasses, because yeah. he has a black mask around his eyes and stuff. Oh, that's so. cool. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Oh, I don't know where they get these from. Okay, so what scares you? I can no, he's done everything. I, I, Nothing I can scares honestly, this I, guy. I can honestly say, from my 20s, uh, guy, people who knew me very well called me the man without fear. I've raced cars. And I've crashed a car at over 200 miles an hour. I've jumped out of perfectly good airplanes. I've done scuba dives down to like 200 See, feet. See, nothing. So. What do you, what'd you get that question? Nothing scares this guy. You heard his career. Nothing scares this guy. So, uh, <laughs> okay, that's better. What cheers you up when you're feeling blue? There's a couple of movies. Uh, one I can think about is Drop Dead Gorgeous with Kirsten Dunst, who also came from New Jersey. It's just a wacky, funny, crazy Fun movie. Yeah. It really is. And it's mostly, there's a couple of movies. Triumph, the insult comic dog, doing yes. interviews at the Star Wars movies. Where, oh, where, I haven't seen where, oh, you got to see it, because at oh, one point great. there's a guy dressed as Darth, Darth Vader, and he comes up and he goes, oh, great Dark Lord, you know, all those buttons. Which one do you push to have your mommy and daddy come and pick you up? <laughs> then there's another one. He's talking to probably the only young lady in line with, like, hundreds of males. 
And he goes, so what does it feel like to be here surrounded by all these men who have no idea how to satisfy you? <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of humor. It's that's, just funny as hell. That's fantastic. Heck. So what do you got? What are you working on right now? Um, I'm working on a novel that I actually started when I was at Disney in 1995. And it started out, I actually produced part of it as a comic book oh, wow. in the 90s. But I'm going back and doing it as a strictly prose novel. And it's called Invasive Species. It takes place in Central Florida. Oh, wow. So very, you know, Florida-centric kind very of Very much. Awesome. That's fantastic, man. Uh, where can people find you coming up the road? Um, next Sunday, we will be at the Rabbit's Hole, which is a bookstore in Claremont, Florida, okay. doing a, mat, a signing, and we're doing some panels. Um, a week after that is Claremont Comic Con in Lake County, Florida. Awesome. And then two weeks after that is the rescheduled Spooky, Spooky Empire, Empire. Yes. at, at the, at the uh, Orange County Convention. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, Spooky Empire, uh, we got hurricaned out. And so yes. uh, we're all looking forward to that being rescheduled. Yeah. And, uh, I, was, I was actually on the loading dock that Thursday morning when we got the email that said it was canceled. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay, so you know what? Let's get us a. We, uh, we're going to do this again. We have uh, the unusual suspects and Clarence. Both of these are uh, in a in the same universe. Uh, they take place in a carnival environment. Yes, they uh, take yep. place in a, a carnival so look, in the nineteen thirties. You guys are just finding out about uh, early American carnivals from watching Freak Show. Mm -hmm. More. more, there's more. Come get yep. more, okay? And can I say, can I say yes. that some of my books are available on smashwords.com okay. as digital downloads. Awesome. That's fantastic. And we're going to put those links down in the description of this interview. I'm told back behind the camera we've got to wrap things up. So uh, special thanks, as always, to Something Unique Magazine, the Florida Book News, Wordfire Press, Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces and Funnies, and the Historical Miniature Gaming Society South for helping. They share these videos all over the sure. world for us mm -hmm. and help us reach a larger audience. I'm GW Pometer, and we've been hanging with John Catapano uh, here at the 35th Annual Necronomicon. Remember, if you haven't already, go down and subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Ow!